us that these people are supposed to man the border. But the people are parading the streets. And they are intimidating our Okada riders, our young people who are making a living out of Okada. We don't share border with Togo alone. We share border with Ivory Coast. So we have towns like Lubo, Onwin, Sampa, all along border. Why is it that the government hasn't sent troops to those areas for the people to man the border? It is not the eastern border that is closed. It is the entire border of the Republic of Ghana that is closed. So it is a lie that they have sent the men here to check the spread of COVID. In fact, a lot of them, and we spoke to some of them, they can't even speak one ever dialect. If you send security people to an area that is predominantly one dialect speaking, you expect the government to send people who are familiar with the area so that when they, they can interact, they can speak and have conversation and appreciate whether indeed the person is an indigenous from the Republic of Ghana or indeed the person is an alien. You bring people who cannot speak the Anglo dialect. So when they meet the people across the border, how are they supposed to communicate? It's not everybody who's gone to school. So that is the level of frustration among the people. Now, so even as you prepare to make the whole world hear how frustrating this is, what do you intend to do beyond today's event to mass up the ordinary people, ordinary Ghanaians who already are angry to go out? Because EC is going to do the registration in a form of a cluster. And there's a duration within which it will stay within any zone where they move their men to. How are you going to make sure that you go on the ground in spite of the provocation? That is, if government does not listen to this cry to withdraw the men or actually redirect them to do what is actually border policing. Now, what we intend to do is to encourage our people to really nearly register, no matter the intimidation, so that come December, their names can be found in the register. Because, you see, if you don't register, you cannot cast your vote in December. But the point we are further making is that even if the national security are saying that it is COVID-19 that is a threat to national security, Galamse per, pursuant to national security document is also described as a national security threat. Why have they not deployed men in uniform to go to Achim area to go and to go with the same venom to fight Galamse as, as they seek to fight COVID-19? So the, 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 the malice behind the deployment of the security forces in this area, it is clear. It is all political. Okay, thank you very much, um, Roxen Dapamakpo. Roxen Dapamakpo is a member of the Legal Committee of Parliament and obviously can tell from his body language, his uh, commentary, that he's not too happy about what a uh, majority of people in this particular constituency are describing as voter suppression. I can see a woman here, and um, Madam, uh, first Good of all, morning. you are I live. Want to use my local language. No problem. You are live on TV XYZ and Wazo TV. You can catch us. Also on Facebook, just tell a friend, go to your Facebook page, tune into um, Wazo TV or YouTube, watch us live. And very shortly, the members of parliament will be addressing a press conference. David Madakuku, um, Indi now. Indi. Now, we had your job, let's do a mafia over, okay, so you're to over here, police to all immigration officers to all of you, you're over there. Look at the two war, you're me, you're not a major job, I'm you. We're in your way, you're banana. Mioa a drama vio minya, you come in a gana vigio, la drama. Gakanu yeji menya bana, so jokova kukora drama no me, voa manya bana abijam boda, amyo la fima, oma kusu jokora drama nao. Gakanu me kola ketu safa fi oma kusu jokora mia tumu mo forji donami, ana ba register o gami la fia, ale mi ba muna wa dogoa, azuto, gakanu maji tumfu na mi atonyo wokla unchuo bana, amasha mana dogo la basu suma, aye wa register. Okay, so, so 
I'll, I'll come back to you shortly. But what um, my um, uh, colleague here is saying is that a lot of people in town are already angry. The anger stems from the fact that since the clue that where they ply trade, many young people in town, many women who go there to ply trade cannot survive because there's no uh, encourage people to come out and vote in their numbers. And for those who perhaps are suggesting that, look, we are fed up, we will not step out, it is not going to be in your interest. And so you have all the assurance, step out and vote. I have one Okada rider with me. Um, good morning, sir. And this is uh, live on uh, TV XYZ and Wazo T. And I've told our viewers that very shortly you'll be listening to the message from the minority caucus in parliament. I just saw the ranking member on foreign affairs, Okujeto Ablakwa, just uh, walk past me. I've seen other very prominent members of the NDC who are also coming in. These are founding members of the party who have walked in to encourage the people to vote. But you ride uh, Okada around. Yes. Um, I don't know. Can you speak English? I guess so. Um, but my, like, but my do for, but Maybe I do for, but do you find? Yo, uh, look in a poor. You look in a full room now, fia. Yo, I feel like by you, my phone will come up brown. But I'm a more. I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. You know, I'm going to have a good job by my nose. You're fine. My nose. You're fine. I get your job by my nose. You're fine. My nose. You're fine. I get your job by my nose. You're fine. I'm going to look at my name. Jack Fulawa. Tafla. I have a good job. I do. I said, I'm a more from what they are. Time and you close to work. But I'm going to do. I know. I'm going to have a good job. 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 Mungongo, undo dukoga, akwa kwa venemi, lakama jamii la lakaka vundo do hamu kumota. Aba waba amechava biji kuzeme jamii yoka mi gagarem. Lemle ba kwa jamii. Kaya mi onfomfia as we speak. Tell us, we've seen soldiers. I have seen them yeah. in trucks driving past every few minutes. I've seen policemen, uh, well armed, driving past. You you ride Okada. How is this affecting the ordinary man within the constituency, and how are you responding? I am top of a bona fide children of Bronx. That is so job of a Pajima. I will first have me no immigration. I can't remember. I can't so job of a voyage to me. I love Bobo. Met me a gap call. I'm more you take me a cock plumbo. I have another tetia. I have you. Me a dio in a ship bonaha. No, you have so John and Marco. Which I go out to Doku. Tiny Chamino Bogona. Me a top of a mission. No dogo. I was a summer. But a young wrong coy. I walk. But a young chi. But me a one hour. I never in Chifafana. Ava a German. Tell a so job of Paja. A full. Yo, Akpalo. So what is basically saying is that um, a lot of them are not too happy. The intimidation is getting out of control, and it is uh, really building agitation among the youth. But because they are getting the support from the member members of parliament, the minority caucus, lots of Ghanaians are speaking against. This, that alone is motivating enough. But as you can see from behind me, you see a lot of people really massing up. And this is the St. Peter and Paul Catholic Church uh, enclave, uh, just opposite the Verdi Pharmacy, where the press conference is just about to start. So uh, from um, here, we are moving straight to the conference room. We are bringing you live coverage of the press conference by the Minority Caucus. And don't forget, stay with Wazor TV um, on all the platforms, Facebook, YouTube, and TV XYZ. And you also catch this press conference live on Power FM. My name is Erika Hianyu and this is coming to you from Aplau, just some two minutes drive from the main border post. So we are linking over to the conference room for the live conference.
Ladies and gentlemen, can we take a seat? Those of us who are standing, can we sit down? Our time is up and we need to commence the press briefing. Them to lock. tell them to lock the door. To lock the door. The room is full. Tell them to lock the door. Please can the door be locked at this stage so that we can start because the auditorium is full. Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the press. You are welcome to the fifth edition of the NDC weekly press briefing happening live at Aflao in the Ketu South constituency of the Nerve Center and World Bank of the Great NDC Devota region. Today we shall be addressing you on the military siege in the eastern border towns and other parts of the country, specifically the military siege in the Vota region and the Oti regions. But before we proceed, let me introduce a few of the dignitaries we have here 
this morning. We have the regional chairman of the National Democratic Congress in the Volta region. Ayazu. As, uh, Ayazu. That is Honorable Henry Kwejo Ametefe. We also have the regional secretary, Honorable James Gunu, is here with us. And we have other regional executives of the NDC. I can see the organizer, Honorable George Lou, the vice chairman is here, the regional youth organizer, and other regional executives who are here are all duly acknowledged. Again, let me introduce to you the Deputy Minority Leader and MP for K2 North, Honorable James Kluche Aveji. Again, let me introduce to you the Member of Parliament for Who West and the Chairman of the MP, NDC MPs Caucus in the Voter Region, Honorable Emmanuel Kwesi Bedra. So once I've introduced Chairman, let me duly acknowledge all members of parliament in the voter region who are here in present and indicate that this press conference is being organized by the National Communication Bureau in collaboration with the voter MP caucus. And so all our hardworking members of parliament are duly acknowledged. Again, let me introduce very special personality we have here, our parliamentary candidates and the incoming MP for K2 South, yeah. Honorable Jifa Gumashi. Yeah. So all parliamentary candidates from other constituencies in the voter region and other parts of the country who are here are all welcome. And let me welcome our friends from the media who have traveled from far places to attend this all important press conference. Welcome all Guineans who are tuned to the several media networks covering this press briefing event live across the 16 regions of Ghana. Again, ladies and gentlemen, let me acknowledge that this press briefing is live on the official NDC Ghana page on Twitter and YouTube, on Wazo TV on Facebook and YouTube, Graphic Online's page on Facebook, and Radio Go's page on Facebook. In the Vota region, we are being aired live on Vota One Television in Ho, Sela Radio 97.1 at Dabala, Global 105.1 FM Ho, Swiss 93.7 FM Ho, Lukusi Radio 96.1, Della Radio 105.7, the Nyeba Radio 104.7, Shine FM 96.9, Holy FM 98.5, Jubilee Radio 106.9, and Kekeli Radio 102.9. In the Greater Accra region, we are live on GH1 Television, Joy News Television, Pan African TV, Power 97.9 FM, Class 91.3 FM, Accra 100.5 FM and Ahoto 92.3 FM. In the course of the briefing, I shall be introduced, I shall be acknowledging the other radio stations who are carrying this press briefing event live. Ladies and gentlemen, without wasting much time, we shall proceed with the reason why we are here. But first, let me acknowledge a very important personality in our midst. I don't know whether I should add his titles, but those of us in the NDC know him. Um, he's somebody we've all learned under his feet, great inspiration to the youth in the NDC. And we continue to learn. Uh, he's a former national security coordinator is being former minister for information and so on. I'm referring to our own uncle, Kofi Tutubi Kwache, who is here with us. And of course, my very good friend, the hardworking constituency chairman for this constituency, 
Chairman Sulu Banji. I call him Chairman One. <laughs> the Ghana Chairman. And our former Minister for Transport, Honorable Jifa Atevo, is also here. We have other formal appointees here. You are all duly acknowledged. If I didn't offense, I would do so in the course of today's press briefing. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the press, as was advertised, we are here to address you on the massive deployment of the military and other security personnel in the eastern border towns, specifically Volta region and the OT region. We are doing this because we believe that the deployment that has been done by President Ekufuado and his government is ethnocentric and targeted at marginalizing the people of this region on political grounds. We know that, as Edmund Beck said, the only way evil triumph is when good people refuse to do nothing. And so we have resolved to do something. We have resolved to speak against the attempt by the despotic Akufuado government to manipulate the 2020 general elections by marginalizing a vast section of the Ghanaian society who they consider averse to their cause. And ladies and gentlemen, to address us on this issue is the member of parliament for the Ketu South constituency, my good friend and mentor, the most successful communication officer, then propaganda secretary of the NDC, Honorable Fifi Fiavekwete. Thank you very much, uh, my younger brother, uh, Sami Jemfi. Uh, I like to call him uh, my younger brother in whom my spirit is very well pleased. <laughs> and uh, let me begin by acknowledging all the comrades of our great party who are here, colleague, members of parliament, uh, all the various leaders of our party, and let me also thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the media, for the, the opportunity to share with you some very important uh, uh, developments that are going on in our country today. Uh, it's our expectation that through your esteemed media, we will convey to our fellow countrymen the grave danger that we see looming over our beloved nation. This danger comes close in the garment of democracy, but in reality, it is naked despotism and tyranny. Now, the immediate reason for this press conference is the recent shocking mass deployment of military personnel along the border towns of the Volta region and similar deployment has been done in the Oti region, the northern region, the upper west and upper east regions as well. It is no coincidence that all these places happen to be strongholds of the opposition NDC. We will this morning touch particularly on the situation in the Keto South municipality and other parts of the Volta region. We are in no doubt that this massive deployment of the military and other security personnel in the Ketu South municipality and other border towns of our region has been timed to coincide with the commencement of the voter registration exercise across the country. These deployments are creating panic and anxiety among residents of Ketu South and other affected towns and districts. Interviews done by some of your colleagues in the media revealed that residents along the Ghana-Togo border are living in a state of fear due to the presence of the military. The MCE 
of Ketu South, who represent the presence here, has explained that the reason for the deployment of the military personnel is so that they can help check and approve routes to prevent foreigners who happen to be infected with COVID-19 from coming from neighboring Togo and uh, risk increasing the cases of COVID in our country. Now, this position has been supported by the Volta Regional Minister, Dr. Lecha, as well. Now, so this is the official government explanation for the turning of Aplau and other border towns in the region into virtual war zones. How laughable. How utterly ridiculous. The total COVID-19 case count in Togo stands at about 615. This is less than the case count in Greater Accra, less than the Ashanti region, less than the Western region, less than the Central region, and just about 75 cases above the case count in the Eastern region. Now, so if there is any fear of COVID, it should rather be the people of Togo who should be afraid of Ghanaians crossing the border to spread COVID-19 in Togo and not the other way around. Yeah. The epicenter of COVID-19 in West Africa is not Togo. Ghana is in a very comfortable lead <laughs> and struggling to be one of the highest as far as the region is concerned. So, and also, one of the first persons who came into our country with the virus was in the presidential entourage in Oslo. So this official reason being provided is not just hollow, it is laughable and actually represents an insult to the intelligence of our people. Just a few days ago, the MPP parliamentary primaries across different constituencies became virtual COVID-19 dissemination conferences. If the MPP government is looking for the real threats of COVID-19, they do really don't have to look very far. They should just spare us the cock and bull stories about the need to patrol the borders to stop foreigners from coming with COVID-19, and they should have the courage to simply tell the truth for once. MPP MP Katie Hammond, in a recent interview, at least showed some honesty when he unwittingly disclosed what is obviously the real reason behind the deployment of the military along our borders. He revealed that deployment of troops in Ketu South and other eastern border towns is to prevent Togolese from coming across the border to come and register. Voila. We need no rocket scientists to understand that the grand agenda of the MPP is to intimidate our steaming supporters and make it difficult for them to come out in their numbers to register when the registration exercise begins tomorrow, Tuesday, the 30th of June. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, to understand the real reason behind this massing up of military and other security personnel in the Ketu South municipality and other towns of the Volta region, it is important that we try to, to help this country to see the big picture. Now, this big picture is MPP's perennial discrimination against the people of the Volta region. The bottom line is that, as far as the MPP is concerned, the people of the Volta region are foreigners. The others are not Ghanaians. Now, some people who do not really know this might be surprised about this statement. But we are going to systematically leave you in no doubt as to the authenticity of this statement. To begin with, let us remind everyone, especially the young people of Ghana, that the MPP family has been on record accusing the founder of our country, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, of being a foreigner. Specifically, they said he was from Liberia. 
a member of the same NPP family also took President Rawlings to court over claims that he was not a Ghanaian. The mother of President Rawlings hailed from Keta in the Volta region, just next door to Keta South. President Rawlings was born in the Gold Coast in 1947. He served this country as an Air Force officer, became the head of state of this beloved country. Despite all this, the MPP deemed him not good enough to be a Ghanaian. After all, in the view of the MPP, who have always believed that they are the owners of Ghana, Keta is not part of Ghana. If President Rawlings, despite hailing from Keta in the Volta region, was deemed not to be a Ghanaian, why is anyone in shock when we state that the MPP has an ingrained belief that the people of the Volta region are aliens and therefore not to be allowed to determine the political destiny of Ghana. Qatar, by the way, where Rawlings hailed from, has always been a part of the Gold Coast. In fact, both Qatar and Ketu district have always been an integral part of the Gold Coast. They have never at any point in time been part of Togo. But not in the view of the owners of Ghana. Now, so many other sons and doctors of the Volta region have faced similar discrimination in the hands of the NPP. Some of you may recall how in the year 2009, at my parliamentary vetting to become a deputy minister of finance in the government of President Mills, NPP MPs following the same agenda boldly claimed that I was not a Ghanaian and therefore should not be allowed to become a member of Ghana's government. My father, Joseph Kofi Kwete, hails from Nogopo in the Ketu South constituency. His mother comes from Anyako in the Keta constituency. But in the opinion of the owners of Ghana, I am not a Ghanaian. My mother, Benonia Lomado Aivo, hails from Denu and Kliko, both in the Ketu South constituency. But in the opinion of the owners of Ghana, myself, and all the people of Ketu South that I have the privilege of representing in parliament are not worthy to be called Ghanaians. Now, it is against this background that we need to view what the MPP is doing in Ketu South and other border towns of the Volta region. This siege of the Volta region dates back to MPP's perennial hatred, hatred towards any group of people that they perceive as standing between them and their insatiable desire for absolute political power. The unfounded and rather incoherent rantings of my friend, Katie Hammond, will ordinary, ordinarily be treated as just that. But they reveal the same deep-seated belief that somehow the defeat of the NPP in elections in this country is on account of foreigners who come from Togo. He actually claimed that the NPP was costing to victory in the first round of the 2008 elections. And Togolese were allowed to come from across the border to overturn the results in the second round of the 2008 elections. Somehow, Katie Hamon and the MPP have forgotten that even back in 2008, the MPP left all other borders open, but specifically closed the eastern border of this country before and during the first and second round of the 2008 elections. So the defeat of the MPP in the year 2008 had absolutely nothing to do with foreigners coming from Togo because the borders were sealed. Exactly what it is we are seeing today. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, this show of tribal hatred did not start today. The Nanado, Nana Akufuado's government is only taking it to a whole new level. This deep-seated animosity comes from a sense of entitlement. They believe that because they are superior Ghanaians, all others who do not share their political perspective must be deemed ineligible so that the political destiny of Ghana will remain exclusively in their hands. Now, the people of Cote d'Ivoire 
have suffered largely from that same sense of entitlement, that superior feeling of being better Ivorians. Now, the concept known in French as Ivoirieté, that is, being a proper Ivorian, led to the unfortunate and bloody civil war that almost destroyed the hitherto very peaceful country of La Côte d'Ivoire. During President Conan Bédier's presidency, ethnic tensions rose sharply with a widening rift between the country's predominantly Muslim North and mainly Christian South. Before the 1995 and 2000 elections, a law drafted by President Conan Bédier and upheld by the Supreme Court of Ivory Coast required that both parents of a presidential candidate had to be born within Côte d'Ivoire. This led to the disqualification of the northern presidential candidate, Alassane Ouattara, who represented the predominantly Muslim North and poor settler workers who worked on coffee and cocoa plantations in the South. We in Ghana are grateful to God that despite the perennial attempt of the MPP family to define who a proper Ghanaian is, we as a country have largely avoided the path of national disintegration and bloody ethnic conflict. But just as Ivoirité is dangerous in Ivory Coast, so also is Ghanaité iniquitous and dangerous in Ghana. Yeah. It is high time the NPP family were told once and for all that the fact that they never once won any election against Dr. Kwame Nkrumah had nothing to do with foreigners. Nkrumah was beloved by most of the people of Ghana and won elections freely and fairly. The founder of the MPP family, Dr. J.B. Dankwa, could not even win one single election in his lifetime. Not even one. Now, instead of addressing their political groups, uh, I mean, perennial losses in elections, the MPP rather chooses to direct their venom and hatred towards innocent groups and accuse them of being aliens. It will be recalled that this was the main reason that the MPP family introduced the Aliens Compliance Order back in 1969, a wicked legislation introduced by them when they finally won through manipulation the 1969 elections after orchestrating to have the CPP banned. What cowards and manipulators they have always been. Now it is high time the MPP family were informed that their humiliating electoral losses to President Rawlings in both the 1992 and 1996 elections had nothing to do with foreigners from Togo. The Volta region, together with eight other regions in Ghana, voted for President Rawlings and the NDC in both 1992 and 1996. This was an overwhelming support in all the regions of Ghana except one. In fact, there is no previous election that the NDC as a party has won in Ghana that the party did not win at least eight regions out of the ten. That tells you how absolutely overwhelming our support is. It has nothing to do with foreigners that are coming from any other part of, the, of, the, of West Africa. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, when, where from all this hatred and animosity towards one region, and all the spurious and unfounded claims that the painful defeat suffered by the MPP were on account of foreigners from Togo. Was it Togolese who have been winning the central region and the western region for the NDC in all the elections the party has won? Was it them who won the eastern region for the NDC in both 1992 and 1996? Was it them who win Greater Accra and for regions any time the NDC wins the elections? Is it Togolese who always win the three northern regions for the NDC any time the party wins? This heightened sense of delusion, this refusal on the part of the MPP to accept the naked truth must come to an end. Both Nkrumah CPP and Rawlings NDC did not humiliate the NPP family at the polls because of Togolese or Liberians or aliens from Jupiter or Pluto. They did so because they won the hearts and the minds of the people of Ghana through their patriotism 
and dedication to the well-being of Ghanaians. Now, MPP's chronic problem is that they do not have in their DNA the capacity to accept an electoral defeat. They just cannot come to terms with the fact that they cannot win every election. Maybe the delusion that Ghana is their property makes it too difficult for them to accept this reality. When they lost in 1992, it was a stolen verdict. When they lost in 1996, it was a bought verdict. In 2008, Nana Kufuado used all shenanigans, including the most dastardly attempt to change figures in the strong room of the EC. But for the vigilance and the courage of the NDC in that strong room in the second round in 2008, Nana Kufuado and his MPP would have succeeded to subvert the will of the people of Ghana. We have not even mentioned their failed efforts, as was captured on tape, to place dead bodies in water bodies in the Volta region as a way of subverting the will of the people of Ghana. After all these machinations failed, Nana Kufuado, true to character, refused to concede and congratulate the winner of the elections, it's, it's, I mean, uh, uh, J.E.A. Mills, of blessed memory. After the 2012 defeat, the MPP went on a violent spree beating and assaulting innocent citizens at Obra Sport and other places, destroying property in the process. Then to cover their shame, they went on a face-saving journey to the Supreme Court in a bid to overturn the supreme will of the people of Ghana. They just do not have it in their genes to accept defeat. After all, how can the owners of Ghana ever lose to parties that are filled with aliens and foreigners? The only time they accept any electoral outcome is when their party wins. It is either their way or the highway. What kind of people are these? Ladies and gentlemen of the media, the anger of the MPP anytime they lose elections should rather be directed at their own internal campaign inadequacies. It is only chronic losers who blame others for their losses, because winners always elect to do deep introspection and self-correction when they lose. Now, rather than direct their venom towards others, so instead of MPP being angry against others for daring to deny them their God-given right to rule Ghana, it would be better for them to do a deep self-examination. As the great philosopher Socrates said, an unexamined life is not worth living. Why does the MPP family believe that they are superior Ghanaians and that they have a God-given right over the political and economic destiny of Ghana? Kwame Nkrumah's CPP, that fought for the independence of Ghana. At the time, the MPP family kept begging Britain not to grant independence to our nation, did not even behave as though they were superior Ghanaians. Where were these tribal bigots who think they own Ghana when Dr. Kwame Nkrumah ably aided by Volta Region's Dr. Agbeli Bedema and other nationalists declared the motion of independence on the eve of our independence? Where were they? Where were these tribal bigots who think Ghana is their property when Kwame Nkrumah, Agbeli Bedema and others fought to keep Ghana as one unitary state, one nation, one people, one destiny. At a time when the MPP family was busily fighting for Ghana to be made a federal state so that each region can keep its own resources. To keep this beloved country united, Kwame Nkrumah had to pass the Avoidance of Discrimination Act in 1957 to outlaw political parties based on regional, ethnic, or religious differences. Where were these tribal bigots all those times? Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Agbeli Wedema, and all who want independence for Ghana never once contemplated betraying this beloved nation. They never once stooped so low as to become paid agents of any foreign power to work against the interests of their own country. But we know that declassified files of the CIA will reveal that the same cannot be said about the main founder of the MPP family. Dr. J.B. Dankwa, the beloved uncle of President Akufuado. Yet, 
Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and Agbeli Gwedema never once believed that there were more Ghanaian than others. What gives the MPP family the moral right to think that they are superior Ghanaians? President Rawlings and the many patriots, one of whom sitting right on my right, who toiled with him from 1982 to 1992 to leave this nation from the brink of collapse at a time when things had sunk so low and the self-belief and confidence of our people were so shattered that some of our brothers at the time were moving in droves to Togo to work as shoe shine boys. And some of our sisters left to Nigeria and Cote d'Ivoire and had to prostitute themselves just to be able to survive. Rollins and these many patriots who through sweat and dedication rallied the great people of Ghana back to the place where once again we become a nation that was respected and admired among our peers have never claimed that they were superior Ghanaians. Where were these tribal bigots when this massive reconstruction of our country was being done? Where were they when this group of patriots worked tirelessly to bequeath to this country the 1992 constitution that today has become the foundation of political stability upon which all sons and daughters of Ghana, North, South, East, and West, are working hard to construct a Ghana that will become a great and strong nation under God. Where were these tribal bigots all this while? Now, the earlier the MPP family snapped out of this pathological delusion that some Ghanaians are foreigners and only they are proper Ghanaians, the better it will be for all of Ghana. The respect for all Ghanaians, North, South, East, and West, is crucial in our endeavor to be able to hold hands together in a true spirit of brotherhood, as envisaged by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah at the time of our nation's independence. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, the massive deployment of the security forces along the border towns is just one of the several desperate means the MPP government is employing to achieve its political ends. We in Ketu South and the Volta region are not completely shocked at all. Where should we be? Have we not seen the brutal violence unleashed on innocent Ghanaians in broad daylight during the Ayawasu West war gone by elections? The whole world witnessed in shock how this despotic regime turned a simple by election into a war front and resorted to the criminal abuse of power. We were witnesses to the egregious bloodletting by a gang of MPP brigands and bandits masquerading as national security personnel with the tacit approval of the President of the Republic, who also happens to be the chairman of the National Security Council. <laughs> now to confirm that the hoodlums operated with the tacit approval of the regime, the president who touts his democratic credentials blatantly refused to implement critical recommendations of the commission that he himself had set up. How tragic, how shameful. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, this is the same game plan the MPP is following. A plan which today has reduced an electoral commission that has since 1992 gained international recognition and neutrality for e international recognition for its neutrality, professionalism, and credibility into a pliant instrument to subvert the will of the people of Ghana. Now, the saddest part is that while all this is going on, the MPP actually continue to delude themselves that the people of Ghana and the rest of the world cannot see the systematic effort they are employing to bastardize the electoral system and virtually turn this nation into a, into a banana republic. Something, some, I mean, same things the MPP is doing with institutions like the NIA and the NCA. The NCA has become the state institution that is being used under the guise of enforcement of regulations to close down media houses that are perceived to be too critical of the regime. Freedomhouse.org an international media freedom watchdog recently described the modus operandi of regimes like that of Dana Kufuado, regimes that pretend to respect the rule of law, but in reality are leaving no stone unturned to subvert media freedoms. Governments 
according to media.com, according to freemedia.org, governments are using the more subtle tools of media regulations to restrict press freedoms, maintaining a veneer of legality and pluralism that is less likely to draw attention and criticism from abroad. Manipulation of the regulatory framework allows them to either tolerate or rein in influential news outlets, depending on the political situation, and, and permit even democratically elected government to fortify themselves against future electoral competition. Now, the above accurately describes the shameful methods being used by the Akufuado government. Now, when concerns are raised, the president quickly points to regulations and laws. He has so soon forgotten that even apartheid, apartheid was backed by legislation. Even the trade and ownership of black slaves in America was legal in the US until the year 1865. The, the Aliens Compliance Order, which they often denounce, I'm talking about the MPP family, denounce all the time, was also backed by law. Now, the undemocratic ways of this regime are bad enough. The high-handedness is terrible enough. But what adds insult to injury is when they actually pretend to be the custodians of the rule of law and the civil liberties and of democracy. What hypocrites they are. Christ refers to people such as these as whitewashed graves. In Matthew 23, 28, Christ described this type of pretenders in the following words. Woe unto you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed graves, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. Yeah. To our friends in the MPP, remember God is not mocked. Whatsoever you sow, that you shall reap. And the earlier you awoke to that realization, the better. So don't, don't forget that the day of reckoning will soon come. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, all those watching this development, this very sad development, and not raising their voices, are through their silence encouraging the entrenchment of an oppressive and tyrannical regime. Those watching this looming danger, by failing to speak up and condemn it, should remember that their silence makes them accomplices, and posterity will judge them if their own conscience fails to do so. We urge them to speak up and let the MPP government and others who think alike appreciate that citizenship is not a question of law, it's a question of law. Neither the government of Akufuado nor the military contingent stationed all over our border towns cannot decide who is or who is not a citizen. Now, there are very many Ghanaian families that live on both sides. Lome, just about 10 minutes away from here, the capital of Togo, is a major economic center. It is a the government of Ghana, not too long ago, sent NADMO across the border to make available relief items to Ghanaians resident in Togo. This is ample evidence that there are many Ghanaians who live and work in Togo. Ghanaians do not cease to become Ghanaians just because they live across the border. Just as they do not cease to be Ghanaians simply because they live and work in England or in the United States of America. Now many of us have heard the famous case of Bonito Olympio, who proved in court in Ghana that he was a Ghanaian by descent even though his father, Sylvanus Olympio, was the first president of Togo. The Olympian from the Amegashi family, a family that to date continues to live both in Ghana and Togo. Now, for the information of our friends, the tribal bigots, who continue to insinuate that they are more Ghanaian than the rest of us, we want to inform them that the Amegashis who live in Togo are not foreigners. They continue to be Ghanaians by descent even if some of them opt for dual nationality. Let me now seize the opportunity to mention a few other families who hail from Ghana 
and who have relatives living and working across the border. The Fitis, the Adamas, the Akolaches, the Ajavons, the Tetes, the Malos, the Akapos, the Atipos, the Amuzus, the Folis, the Koshigans, the Greninskis, the Serenus. These are no aliens. Just because they live in Togo, they continue to be Ghanaians by descent. The Bedemans, the Gajekos, the Agbomabiases, the Meganchitis, the Ganyos, the Antonios, the Adeges, the Quists, the Blagogis, the Kukubos, the Tamaklos, the Dusses. If I incidentally talking about Dusses, one of the Dusses family today is the current foreign minister of Togo. Wow. The Apalus, the Baites, and my own maternal families, the Aivons, the Romados, the Badohuns, the Kudaus, the Amatos, have not morphed into aliens from Pluto or Jupiter just because some of them live and work in Togo. They remain as much Ghanaians as the Akufoados, the Osafomafos, and all the other tribal bigots in the NPP. As for the few of our own ever brethren who have allowed the MPP, their MPP affiliation to blind them to the point of taking part in a fake documentary which has been circulating in the media, purporting that those who come from across the border to register are not Ghanaians, may our ancestors have mercy upon them. Now we want to remind the good people of Keto South and the Volta region and the sons of Volta region in all the other 15 regions of Ghana that this massive intimidation that they are seeing and hearing of today will by December 7th of this year be no more. The Egyptians you see today, you shall soon see them no more. Therefore, this is not the time for fear. This is the moment for courage. This is the moment for bravery. Remember that in the same way in the year 2008, the MPP orchestrated to close the eastern borders, but the great people of Keto South and the Volta region defied all odds and came out in massive numbers to support the NDC to snatch the parliamentary victory from the MPP in the first round and defeat the MPP in the presidential election in the second round. Yes. That same inspiration is what is needed today to rise up to the current challenge. The same spirit of boldness and defiance that inspired us in 2008 should animate us even more today. Because if we thought the government of President Kufo was bad, then this current one can only be described as the most desperate, the most dangerous, the most intolerant, and the most abysmal in the history of our country. Keto South and the Volta region have proven before that they are capable of rising to the challenge when it is critical to reject the misrule of the MPP. Let us once more come out in our multitudes, defy the intimidation, and register massively in order to let this oppressive, desperate government of tribal bigots get out of power. We wish to call on the supporters of the NDC all over Ghana to rise up and refuse to be intimidated during the registration exercise which begins tomorrow. We want at this day to salute our flag bearer and leader of our party who actually has said that where there is the will, there is the way. And therefore, NDC have faith because victory beckons us. Destiny is on our side. We also want to salute the founder of our party, President Rawlings, for releasing a very strong statement to condemn the intimidation that is going on along the eastern border. <laughs> Finally, I want to say that the courts of the people of Ghana, under the influence of the only supreme court in heaven, will speak on December 7. I repeat, the courts of the people of Ghana under the influence of the only Supreme Court of Heaven will speak on December 7. The harder the battle, the sweeter the victory shall be. 
So may God help us to resist oppressive rule with all our will and our might forevermore. Amen. Amen. Trust of the land towards a secure future development. Our goal from victory unto victory, the end is we shall live a stable democratic Ghana. Our strength in unity. Thank you. Massive deployment of the military and other security personnel in the voter region is targeted at excluding the people of this region from the impending voter registration exercise, thereby suppressing the voter population in this region to manipulate the upcoming general elections. And we are saying enough is enough. We will not accept that. If President Okufuado feels that he has performed, let us fight this election on a level playing field. That is a signal we are sending to him and his despotic ethnocentric government from Aflau today. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause again for our speaker. At this stage, before we open the floor for questions, I will invite the chairman of the voter MP caucus to make a brief statement. But let me, before he does, before he does so, let me acknowledge Choboy, yeah. let me acknowledge another son of this region who I call him the Choboy man. He is elections director of the great NDC, Comrade Elvis Efi Ankara. He's here. And before we leave, he will be addressing us on some issues pertaining to the voter registration exercise, which is scheduled to commence tomorrow. As so at this stage, with a round of applause, let us welcome to the microphone, Honorable Bedra, MP for Who West. Thank you. Thank you, our National Communication Officer. Colleagues, comrades, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the caucus, I want to read a statement from the overlord of a flower traditional area. This morning, he was on a radio, and this is what he said. Please note that because we are peace-loving does not make us cowards. When the fire is lit, there will be no turning back. And the said fire will consume everything on its way. This is Togbe Fiti. Amenya, the fifth, the paramount chief of our flower traditional area. On behalf of the voter caucus members of parliament, and on behalf of the regional executive, we want to thank the National Communication Bureau that today they decided that a weekly briefing of the press will be done in the voter region. We want to salute you, Sami Jemfi and his crew, and all the media personnel who travel all the way from Accra, Oho, and elsewhere to this place. I also want to thank my colleagues from the regional executives, as well as the national executives, and members of parliament who decided to join us on this press briefing. Ladies and gentlemen, the fire has been lit. 
And we the Votarians are ready. We are not cowards. I want to repeat that. We are not cowards. We don't fear people. We only respect. And therefore, whoever has deployed the military personnel to the, our borders should call them back immediately. We are giving them up to the end of tomorrow, Tuesday. The military personnel must be recalled back to their barracks. There is no war between Ghanaians and Togolese. We are peace-loving people, and therefore, we will continue to love everybody equal. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, at this stage, if you have a question, you can raise up your hand. We'll pass the microphone to you, and you can ask your question. But please, you only raise up your hand if you are a journalist. Is there any question? I saw Kwamla Kluche here. OK, I can see a lot of hands here. So my microphone man. No, no, because of COVID, you will get close to him and then offer him the microphone to speak without him holding the microphone. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Ajona Mengsa, and I report for GBCOnline.com, Accra. Uh, I wish to direct my question, first of all, to the COCO chairperson, the, the chairman, the Honorable Bedra. Uh, you said the military should be recalled within or by close of tomorrow. May I know how you're going to monitor this and show the government refuses to withdraw these military people. And also to the MP for the area who addressed the media, may I know what exactly or what plans that you have to monitor or to ensure that people within the localities that these military are, are protected or guided to go and register. Because we understand that people think that when they were to serve or apply with just the main border. When you go to Agboboma, you go to Afonyo Kopo, those typical communities are not close to the main city. The implementation are so high there. I was there myself. So may I know how you're going to ensure that people come out in their number to register as part of your duty as political party to ensure that people register and vote on the day of national election. Thanks for that intelligent question. It shows that you are disturbed about the deployment yourself. So can we take the next question? Emmanuel Majesty, my question has to do with on Come on. Media. Yeah, Salah Radio, Dabala. Okay. My question has to do with Honorable Katie Hammond. I would like to find out, uh, we have a privileged committee in the Ghana Parliament. What our MPs, that is the voter MPs caucus, what mechanism are they putting into place so that when they live here, and they can you know, summon the Honorable Katie Hammond to answer some questions pertaining voters and not Ghanaians. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I saw a hand in the middle here. Uh, can you bring it? Kamala Kluchi of TV3. So two quick ones. Uh, one dovetails into the first one that Ejona asked. Uh, to the chairman of the caucus, you have given an ultimatum that by the close of Tuesday, uh, the security or the military should be withdrawn if it doesn't happen. What are you going to do? Now, with the issue of uh, 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 the ethnic uh, or the tribal things that you have raised, the question to the Honorable Fifi Kwete is how to criticisms that you are inflaming passions using the tribal card. How do you respond to that? Thank you for the question of what we are doing to uh, protect our people in the other border you know, towns. And then we will deal with the rest. Fifi Kwete will deal honorable The inflaming passions on tribal lines. Thank you very much. So, Honorable Bedra, over to you. Thank you very much, TV3 and Ejona. Um, I want to assure all of us that the COCO has plan and that plan B will not be disclosed today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. 
In fact, uh, colleagues are here, so please. I mean, step in to, to, I mean, to, to help clarify some other things as well, if we don't always fill it up. Uh, the first one relating to Honorable Katie Hammond. You were asking whether we can ensure that he's taken before the Privileges Committee for what he has said. Uh, to be honest, uh, you know, when you, when you commit some of these, what I call, it's actually to get you exposed. Okay, exposing you actually is, is some of the big, the best punishment. Think maybe a colleague MPs and I would uh, think about it, but we don't really think that it has to necessarily be privileges committee. And be, besides, don't forget when it comes to privileges committee, if you are a minority, uh, you are not going to have a lot of uh, 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 luck when you get there. Yeah, now the issue about whether we are not inflaming passions when uh, we raise some of the issues we have raised, I was going to say that it's almost appearing like. Uh, Telling the relatives of George Floyd and the blacks, not just in America but all over the world, who have had uh, knees on their neck from time immemorial and who are screaming, We can't breathe, and telling them that when they shout, We can't breathe, they are actually inflaming racial passions. The Evers can't breathe, yeah. Yeah. Ever lives matter. So this is simply a call for justice, a call for the nation to understand our solidarity, that together, like rainbows, we make this country great. I never miss podium in the form of Dr. Agbeli Gbedema, which means our contribution right from the very beginning of this country. Today, as a young CPP man who has now grown to become a revolutionary, we shall not forgive them. In France, when Marie Antoinette heard of the masses in the street asking for bread. Do you know what he said? Give them cake. At that time in France, the ordinary man does not know what is cake. Then he told them why. They are hungry. Give them cake. And that led to the assassination of Marie Antoinette. You cannot take the masses for granted. So they are driving us into the field of war. I will never sit down to be defeated. I have a message from the flag bearer of the party. Yesterday at the meeting in Ho, he called me. My brother, go ahead. I am behind you. Please, let's go ahead. Thank you very much. Honorable Samuel Okuje to will deal with the outstanding questions before we move on. So, the thank you very much, Honorable. Ibrahim's question is still outstanding. The question about which of the deployments we are concerned about, whether it's the original COVID-19 deployment or the current heightened military deployment. Your question itself should expose the dishonesty that has characterized this whole government operation. We are told by the minister responsible for the interior, the regional minister, that this is the normal deployment they have done to prevent the importation, the further importation of COVID-19. And yet, This deployment, when it was first rolled out, did not include the military. We're all here. The immigration
Yes, we are waiting for the 90%. The Togolese authorities issued a statement that they have not given their voters register to anybody. Five years on, consistently picking on the voter region. We are, we, we are for peace. Our chiefs are for peace. Our elders are for peace. We all want to live in unity. The national anthem of this country was composed by one of our own, Philip Beho. We have an equal stake. They don't even understand the transvoter Togoland question. That major part of it, it's, 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 it's an agenda that cut across countries from Cameroon, Benin, the Mampusi area, Dagbon area. It's how this matter even has become a Volta secessionist agenda, distortion of history. Yeah. And we know our history. We've always been part of the Ghana construct. Is it too much to ask to be respected, to be valued, to be seen as any other person? Listen to Katie Hammond. He says, you know, they belong to one ethnic group. They, they, the Evers are here, Evers are in Togo, one ethnic group. The Akans. You know there are Akans in Ivory Coast, across the border, Elubo. I've gone there, I've attended funerals. Beautiful Akan culture. Why is nobody talking about that? Why are they not being targeted? The Hausa speaking people, they are the most prolific tribe in, the, in, in Africa. They cut across northern Nigeria, Gambia, Senegal, Ivory Coast, all over. Are we to then say the, the, the Hausa speaking people should not be allowed to vote? They are not Ghanaians. The Fulanis. Are we to say that Fulanis should not be on the register? And then what would that happen? What would that mean for our beloved and cherished second lady? So please, let's stop these things. We are one people. We are Ghanaians. Let's focus on the things that matter. Our people want jobs. They want development. You can't fulfill your promises. You are just at 14%. Instead of working to inch up a bit higher to justify why you should be retained, you are whipping ethnic sentiments. So we are determined that that military deployment, we will not accept. We will go with you to the locations. We insist that all of Ghana should be treated equally. This is a matter of justice. We are not going to accept this discrimination where you pick and target one part of Ghana. It must stop. We have intermarried, we've attended schools, we did well with the boarding school system. We are all one people. We are Ghanaians. And let that Ghanaianness. Finally, and, 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 and Sam, I must make this point very forcefully. The Ghana Armed Forces is very respected all over the world. You go to the United Nations, anytime we've attended the General Assembly meeting, they mentioned the Ghana Armed Forces with pride because of exploit. This year, we celebrated 60 years of the Ghana Armed Forces deployment in peace operations since the, Co the Congo deployment. Why is President Akufuado as Commander-in-Chief reducing the Ghana Armed Forces to some citizenship inspection unit? Why? That they, 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 they respected, revered military. And we have friends in there. They are not enthused one bit. They are, they are boiling with anger, reducing them to a citizenship inspection unit. You, you look like a Togoli, uh, you can't come here, you go back. Is that what the armed forces is for? Please, please. And as Comrade Fifi did, we salute two former commander in chiefs hmm, of the Ghana armed forces. President Jerry John Rawlings himself a senior military officer, the flight left. Hello, no only valet Jatai Jatai Laofia Nala Laosi Omalo 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 No only valet Jatai Jatai Laofia. Oh, 
Dongoli vale jata Jata na la ofia e Na la o la o si e O ma lo o O lo di o Akpa na mi Em Awa ba Mi an ofi o Ofo nu Ofo nu ala gwa Ma ya ba fi fi ya sa e vuk ba Ga kak ba e vuk ba I got the Amiga Zoom in ton ton lai Ye vuk ba ma, mi vuk a shine Mi a fa a me chichi o kata la fi a original chairman Kwa a me ga yo cho gen, mi a fa inka mi MP Mi a fa kokos lida o kata Mi e dak pa na mi ba, e ba Mi va dora fi a E nya ya jo jo ma E anu kwa re ba It's about the Volta region Gaka, it goes beyond Volta region. It's about Ghana yes. and the peace and stability of our democracy. Na enya ya jojo mla fia miena oyijia ni ebo na jojo genya ba democracy ya 1992 miaba tu koko kuku awavo miena ma jimla Ghana akoda daye na naga miako troji dudu. Najaba akoda dai na naga mi atro jidudua unko ngongo yenya foundation for akoda da tano bana unko ngongo ya madai dodo wam ba ya naba amado matoa wo angongo a that person is a threat to our democracy that is the danger we are facing enya ya boga malami sinye. We don't want anybody to use them as an excuse to do anything against the democracy. Yes. That is why we are speaking out and sending a loud and clear warning. But there is no man, no woman, no devil, no military, no police, no akufuado that can stop the will of the people. Yes. There is nothing, 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 absolutely nothing. I think you find it. Zokla, I mean, I do not mean a campaign. Not do Zokla, I quite chicken and no, 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 as an adult. Madashan and Ado, Nyagayo Mato, me call the Moto G. Me mobilize me a move of Ang Ronko, me no Babin Ronqua, eh, me Mulagaco, Anapo, Unqua, me Mulagaco, Unqua, me Mulagapa, and Yaba. I mean, no for fear. Electoral Commission, machine, I hope you call and call Loga. Half of my cover, no. Machine, I'm about. Oh, Gazette, but you call Loga over 6,000 police stations. I don't know, Jago, I'm your pocket. Oh, I'm going to go. You want to take a tower go. I fuck you. I go. I'm not. I'm a man on your 50 over your registration at the local district offices. My job, Paul. Afuma, ame yonya elektra nyauma mi jagba na mi ano wa yafuma mi apa executive o sesan no yafuma afuma o jiwa ya o nu fiti fiti ola e je wo yafuma mi akanku ta unkwa na machine leo machine ma va o wa unta ba yo nkon 